Good evening, happy people. Welcome to our daily devotional scripture that encourages you to pray. It's Friday. I hope you've had a great week in the Lord, and um, I pray you've got awesome plans for worship this weekend, um, and it's great to join you in Bible study tonight. Um, tonight we're going to be looking at a important topic, and that is the uh, topic of wealth and the difficulties uh, with being wealthy. And that, you know, that, that idea may strike some people as, as funny. Hey, Dellen, good evening. Um, difficulties with being wealthy, really? Well, I'd like some more of those difficulties, please. How do I sign up for those? And, uh, and it's, it's good, you know, to, to be uh, of good spirits. You know, it says in Ecclesiastes that uh, laughter doeth good for the soul like a medicine. And um, I, I absolutely believe that to be true. So we are going to take a look at scripture tonight. I want to invite you to open up your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 10. And uh, we're going to focus on verse 23 and then also on verse 24 as we look at the difficulty of being wealthy. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. We thank you for all of your blessings in our lives. We pray, Father, at the close of this week and the start of our weekend, that you would, again, draw us closer to you, encourage us, comfort us. Uh, let us hear your words of love and tender mercy through your scripture, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Plant your word deep within our hearts, deep within our heads, that our faith would bear the fruit that you desire. desire. We thank you, Father, because all good things come from you. And so speak to us tonight, Father, through your word regarding how we should view these blessings and what we should do with these blessings and uh, to understand the responsibility of the blessings that you uh, pour out upon us. Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' name, according to your will and for your glory. And all of God's children, we all say, Amen. Amen. I want to just also quickly say thank you to our social media team. Uh, you guys are awesome. Every night you're on uh, with the broadcast, uh, sharing, uh, summarizing. Um, you're just uh, blessing people. Uh, and it's, it's so great also just to hear the reports afterwards of people joining us from uh, different countries around the world. It is really an amazing thing, this gift of technology. So thank you guys for all that you do. You bless a lot of people, um, many of whom you may, we may never meet. So we praise God for that. So tonight we're going to talk about the difficulty of being wealthy. <laughs> you know, uh, I think probably there's not a great deal of sympathy uh, for wealthy people. I think a, a lot of people look at wealthy people and honestly there may be some envy, uh, there may be accusations. Um, you know, whenever a wealthy person tries to say that they have a difficult life, um, it's usually met, at least in American culture, with a fair amount of disdain. Uh, recently, the um, British, the young British royal couple, Harry and Meghan, um, you know, they struggled to find empathy, uh, even though they were being interviewed by a billionaire. Um, and, you know, there are people who pointed out afterwards that, you know, this couple signed a $100 million contract with Netflix. Uh, maybe that will help them deal with memories of scowls from people in a palace. Um, you know, we're not always the most sympathetic, sympathetic or empathetic of, of wealthy people. Um, I think, honestly, part of us wants to think that wealth will remove our problems. And I think that's one of the reasons why we have a hard time with wealthy people. Because we think that if we had more wealth, then we would have less problems. And the problem with that kind of thinking uh, is, has several different aspects to it. Uh, one is that denies the reality of the fall. The fall being when Adam and Eve fell into sin and then all of uh, creation was corrupted. And uh, the reality of the fall is that all of us um, are born with hearts that are at enmity towards God and at enmity towards one another. And the reality is, is that uh, no amount of money um, is going to erase the fall. The fall is not erased. The original sin and the corruption of the creation is not erased with money. Um, 
it's re, it's erased only um, by the power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ dying to pay for our sins and rising again three days later. Another problem with this thinking that you know if we had if if, we, if I just had more money then I wouldn't have any problems is that then very quickly money becomes my god and I begin to worship money I begin to chase after money I begin to worry about money everything is about money no longer focused on relationships within my own family or in my own community money becomes my end all and be all and I will do anything say anything whatever it takes just to have a little bit more of it I have to tell you that personally I'm not certain who's more obsessed with wealth those who have it or those who don't have it because in in my journey in life I've seen obsession over wealth from both groups of people uh, from those who have quite a bit of it and I do know some people who have quite a bit of wealth uh, and I know some of them are obsessed with having more of it and I also have to tell you that I know people who don't have a lot of wealth at all and they are equally obsessed with it most of us also know industrious people who have built up uh, a business uh, through great industry great sacrifice a great inspiration um, you know, the business has grown to the point where it employs dozens, uh, maybe even hundreds or thousands of people, and they're known in their community and hopefully in their church as well. And uh, we know uh, that with pride, we've, we've seen them with pride, you know, turn it over to their next generation, their sons, their daughters, and even see a third generation uh, employed at the place of business that they, that they built up. Um, but oftentimes, before, even before they die, signs of decay in the business are present. And then soon afterwards, oftentimes it disappears. There's a, a, a incredible statistics about how few family-owned businesses survive the third generation. And so wealth is a very fleeting thing. Now, in your Bibles, I would like to invite you to turn to Mark chapter 10, verse 23. This is the verse I really want us to focus on. And in Mark chapter 10, verse 23, I'm going to read for you the ESV translation of it. And I want to encourage you to look at your own Bible. So Mark chapter 10, verse 23. It says in the ESV translation, and Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And then, of course, you know, goes on from there to talk about um, a, a camel and uh, an eye of a needle. But I want to focus on verse 23. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. That's the ESV translation. And I want to share with you my translation. And I want to do it humbly. I want to share my translation with you in a spirit of humility. Uh, but I do want to also explain to you why I have a slightly different take on, on the translation of this verse. So here's how I translate Mark 10, 23. Um, and looking around, Jesus says to his disciples, those with riches will be entering the kingdom of heaven with difficulty. Um, I think it's important to note that Entering is a future tense verb, so it is a it is something that will happen in the future. So, the, so good news is, uh, wealthy people will be entering into the kingdom of heaven. It's a it's a future tense verb. Um, with difficulty, uh, that Greek word adverb is used three times in the New Testament, and it modifies will be entering. So they will be entering. It will be with difficulty. And since this adverbial phrase, with difficulty, modifies the entire sentence, it is perfectly appropriate to put it at the end of the sentence. Uh, so again, and looking around, Jesus says to his disciples, those with riches will be entering the kingdom of heaven with difficulty. And so I think there is good news in this for people who are wealthy. Uh, wealthy people will be entering the kingdom of heaven, but there is difficulty uh, because of the fact that you are wealthy. And, and what is that difficulty? 
Well, the difficulty lies in um, your view of, of the wealth that you've been given and the wealth that you've earned and acquired. Having said that, uh, I think also um, those uh, that, that that then let's not be too smug in our small bank accounts. For those of us who have smaller bank accounts, let's not be too smug in our small bank accounts. Because the fact of the matter is that no one gets to heaven on the cheap. Uh, all have sinned and are in need of Jesus for their salvation. And the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, is that when you consider the standard of living of that rich young ruler, there's not a one of us who doesn't have a better standard of living today than that rich young ruler did in his day. And I think it's also interesting uh, and a good gospel handle to just remember something. There was somebody wealthier than that rich young ruler in that conversation. And you know who that was? It was Jesus. Jesus was the wealthiest person in that conversation. Jesus is God. All of creation belongs to him. Whatever that rich young man had, Jesus had all of that and everything else. Jesus was the wealthiest person in that conversation and in any conversation. And isn't it prophetic that Jesus says that the wealthy, will, those with riches, will enter the kingdom of God with difficulty? And isn't that prophetic? Because uh, news alert, Jesus himself will also not enter into heaven without great difficulty. Remember, before he ascends bodily into heaven, what does he have to do? He has to die on the cross. He has to be buried for three days. He, you know, leaving heaven was not that painful for Jesus, okay? But getting back into heaven will be a very different story. And let's make no mistake about it. The pains that Jesus experienced on the cross were pains caused by rich and poor alike. While it's not easy for Jesus to enter into heaven, Jesus makes it very easy for us to enter into heaven. Adult converts simply have to believe the word of God and receive the gift of faith from the Holy Spirit. And children of believers, even more simply, are brought into eternal life through the gift in the waters of baptism. You know, Luther was supposedly uh, critiqued. Uh, he tells the story himself on his wife, but supposedly Luther's wife, uh, Katrina, critiqued him for being uh, too generous with the family's money. And uh, his wife, you know, had a, had a point. You know, they had a large family, and uh, she knew what it took to manage the household. But Luther uh, famously replied, uh, God made us with space, in between our fingers so we would let our money fall through <laughs> perhaps the question perhaps that is the question for all of us are you letting your money fall through because therein perhaps lies the true test of how much you worship whatever amount of money you have you know as a parent i think about the responsibilities of a parent and a parent has like Luther and his wife, you know, a parent has responsibility, great responsibilities. If you're a mom or a dad, um, you have responsibilities of providing housing and meals and clothing, uh, helping them with college, etc., etc., etc. But the greatest, the greatest responsibility that you have in raising your children, and that I have as a dad in raising my children is to raise our children to walk in trust of God. So I want to ask you to look at the final verse we're going to look at tonight, which is Mark chapter 10, verse 24. And I, I think it's interesting to just look at the translation of it. And um, I want to draw your attention to a, a, a phrase that more recent, more modern translations have deleted but if you go back to some of the older translations, they, they faithfully had it. And I, I want to bring it back to your attention. Um, in Mark chapter 10, verse 24, Jesus says, Children, how hard it is for those who trust. And that's the missing phrase. 
there in the modern translations, who trust. Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. You see, Jesus' point is that it's not being rich per se, but those who trust in riches that have difficulty with wealth. You know, credit cards don't tell you this, but our coins still do. Trust in God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I, I pray you guys' richest blessings upon your evening. And I pray that the word of God has been a blessing to you in reflecting uh, about all that God has blessed you with and how he will be uh, pleased and honored in how you handle those blessings that he has entrusted you with. And... Uh, I, I pray for your God's blessings upon your worship this weekend. I invite you to come to worship with us. We will have worship uh, tomorrow night at 5 p.m. and then Sunday morning at 8 and 10.30. And I want to ask you also to say a prayer for us tonight. Uh, we've got one more interview yet for our director for uh, music and worship and drama at Faith, and we're very excited about this interview. Super excited. We started out with 20 resumes. And uh, we're just really looking forward to this. So please keep us in your prayers as we have our interview tonight uh, in about 28 minutes. And uh, I pray God's richest blessings upon you and look forward to seeing you again real soon. God's blessings. Good night.